for joining us today for episode five of the Fluid Lab SOS Web Shop Talk. Uh, my name is Richard Fortin. I'm from the Carter University team. And with us on the line is Mike Dudley. He's with our Fluid Lab. And he's going to tell us about our, his Fluid Lab and how the SOS Web feature works. So it's a, a pretty cool tool that we have available to us. And uh, so before we get started, though, I'd like to take just a second to talk about safety. Uh, try to be aware of your surroundings. You should not be driving or operating equipment during this presentation. A couple of things that we'd like for you to take note of, uh, where are you located, uh, the building that you're in or the address that you are at, and make sure that you, you have that in the back of your mind should anything happen. Uh, what will alert you to an emergency, so maybe a, a siren of some sort, a telephone call, or even another person showing up to, uh, to tell you that there's an emergency. Make sure you know if there's any safety risk within your location. Uh, and also, where's the nearest safety center, first aid box, or fire extinguisher uh, in your facility? Uh, hopefully, we won't need any of that stuff, but it's always good to have that in your mind uh, in case anything happens uh, during this presentation. So again, we want to thank you for joining us. We do have some meeting procedures. Uh, if you uh, please mute your phone, uh, you can mute your phone. If you're on a desk phone or a mobile phone, you can mute your phone. Uh, using the traditional mute feature, but there's also a mute feature within the WebEx. Uh, so if you find the little microphone uh, looking uh, icon at the bottom of the screen if you're using a computer, uh, it will probably will not be uh, red, but if you click it, it will turn red and that means you're muted uh, through the WebEx. Uh, if you're on a mobile device, uh, it may be in a different location, but it will be on the screen somewhere. And then uh, the last part there is uh, at the end of the session, we have a small quick poll that we'd like uh, for you to answer. It's uh, about five or six questions, seven questions, I think, and uh, it's just quick, easy, to the point poll. And what we want to do is get your feedback for how we did and maybe what potentially you'd like to hear from uh, in the Shop Talk series in the future. So again, if you don't mind, we certainly appreciate any feedback that you can provide us on this shop talk series is we're, we're trying to uh, make it uh, what what you folks are looking for. So with all that being said, I'm going to uh, shift over and have uh, Mike. Uh, <clears throat> Mike is going to talk about our, our fluid lab. So give me just a second, Mike, and I'll give you the presentation. All right. There you are, sir. Also, I want to uh, make note that we are monitoring the chat. So if you have any questions that you don't want to ask uh, via audio, uh, just type them into the chat box and we'll monitor that and, uh, and get those questions answered. Very good. Can you see my screen now, Richard? Yes, sir, I can. Very well. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in today. Um, I'm Mike Dudley, and I manage the fluid lab for Carter Machinery. Um, we'll keep this pretty informal today, and if you have any questions at any point about anything, uh, even if it's unrelated to what I'm currently speaking about, by all means, please jump in and ask me, um, and uh, I'll be happy to address any of that uh, at, at, at any point. Uh, we really do want to make this as user-friendly for you guys as possible. So uh, I'm just going to give you some super duper high highlights of the Fluid Lab uh, and some of our tools. And then uh, we'll open it up to some Q&A at the end and um, hopefully address any issues that you might have or, or questions you might have. Uh, the first thing I want to hit on is that the uh, Carter Fluid Lab is ISO 9001 2015 certified. Um, we do have a quality policy to uh, provide quality analysis services in a timely manner to ensure customer satisfaction, and the Fluid Lab is committed to meeting applicable requirements and improving its quality management system. Um, so we, we do strive very hard to ensure that the quality of our data and the quality of our interpretations uh, are, are bar none, um, and we have uh, recently been internationally certified to uh, 
attest to that. So I just wanted to let you guys know. Uh, those of you that haven't been to the lab or has been many years since you've been to the lab, things have changed a whole lot. Uh, the picture on the, the black and white picture is from probably the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, and then the color picture is from just a couple of weeks ago. Um, you can see that we have knocked out a wall, added a lot more instruments, um, and that's just looking in one direction. If you turn and look in the other direction, uh, we've new instruments in that in that general area. So that's we kind of operate in what we call our trailer of science. Uh, it's about the same dimensions as a single wide. It's about 15 feet wide by 70 feet. Uh, but within that 70 feet, uh, we're doing about 20 to 25 different individual uh, tests for coolant, oil, and fuel uh, with a very sophisticated instrumentation um, that's very cutting edge. Um, this is the team that helps do that. Uh, it's myself, uh, JT Robinson is one of our senior analysts, Robbie Hobson, senior analyst, Gary Wheeler, senior analyst, DJ Priest, senior analyst. Alvin is my registration guy, and um, Junior is uh, an analyst that does a lot of the wet chemistry for coolant. This was our uh, summer intern last year, Blair. Uh, but uh, this uh, merry band of people uh, is responsible for running last year 126,000 samples through the lab. This year we're slated to do even more, probably around 130 uh, to 135,000. Now that was just what we're scheduled for with the acquisition of our northern uh, territory of Alban, uh, that's going to immediately add an additional 50,000 or so samples um, to our, uh, our our total. So we're a very, very, very busy group of people. <laughs> so, and you might ask, well, what in the world do we test for when we're in the lab? Uh, for oil, well, we run a variety of analysis on it. We do ICP spectrometer, uh, this is where we're looking for the wear elements. That's your irons, your coppers, your chromes, aluminums, things of that nature. We, we test the 19 elements. Uh, we do FTIR, that's infrared uh, analysis, uh, your oil breakdown. That's where we're looking for soot and oxidation, nitration, sulfation. Uh, we do physical tests where we're looking for water, fuel, glycol, things of that nature. We do test viscosity of the oil to make sure that it's the right SAE grade uh, that you're wanting in your machine and your component. Uh, we also do particle count uh, for cleanliness. We look for PQ for ferrous debris, that is iron debris in the oil. We can do microscopic analysis uh, when requested. Uh, we can also do total acid number, total base number, and percent fuel dilution by GC analysis, uh, if you're interested. Uh, for coolants, we do quite a bit. Um, the level one coolant, we're doing glycol percentage, nitrates, pH, conductivity, foam, odor, color, and uh, wear metals. Um, and level twos, we go a little more in depth with the same information, but we also add the anions such as fluoride, chloride, glycolate. Uh, those are a lot of uh, additives uh, and or contaminants that would show municipal water source additions uh, or glycolates for aged coolants. Uh, we also look at the organic acid side, um, the tolytriazoles and benzothiazoles and mercaptobenzothiazoles and all the other things that you can't pronounce or really care about, but really do an important job of inhibiting corrosion in your cooling system. Um, as far as fuel goes, uh, we can do refinery level testing for fuel. We can do everything from dissolved water and percent bio, flashpoint, uh, sulfur content, distillation curves, uh, cold filter plugging point, API gravity, pretty much any, these are just some of the tests that we can do. Uh, it's a wide variety of tests that we provide um, if you're interested in fuel analysis. And again, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to email me or call um, and we can address any, any issues that you might have or questions you might have. Um, from there, we'll move on to the other tool. Once we do all this analysis and run all these samples for you, how in the world do you get your results? Well, the most common way that people get results are they're emailed to them um, through our system. 
So once a report is completed, uh, every afternoon the system automatically spools out all the emails uh, to or the reports to the customers uh, that are set up in our system. The other way that you can get um, your reports is by logging into our SOS portal or SOS web. And you can get to that by going to cartermachinery.com and then you can go to service, SOS web fluid analysis reporting. You click on that. And then here you can log in. Now, if you have not registered, you can simply click there and register for the system. Uh, if you have questions about how to use it, uh, underneath is this resource section. These are all downloadable PDF uh, documents that uh, answer a lot of questions about how to use the fleet page, the samples page, the reports page, all those different things once you are within the software. Uh, but I'll show you how we can uh, use that. So once you register, uh, you can come here and log in, or you can go to my.cat.com and register. It's uh, The website is hosted by Caterpillar, so you can get there either way. Once you get inside of the software, you're going to go to the Quick Link section on the landing page. Click on SOS application. And once you get inside the software for the first time, you can certainly just bookmark this page and when you create a shortcut to it, and it'll take you directly to this page once you log in. Uh, so you certainly can do that. But this is what the uh, software package looks like. Uh, I usually like to operate on the fleet page because it allows me to do most of what I want to do. Um, um, the first thing that I like to do when I log in is clear all the filters, uh, because if you're on a different page in the software looking for a particular serial number um, or asset ID, and then you switch over and look on another page, uh, if, you're using, if you're looking up two separate serial numbers on two different days, the software is very smart. It remembers everything that you do, and it will give you zero results when you try to search, uh, because it can't, re it can't uh, rectify searching for two serial numbers at the same time. It doesn't understand what you want to do. So the best advice I can give you is whenever you first log in every day, go to the little gear icon and clear all filters. You notice that when I first logged in, there was already a serial number here from the last time that I was in. Um, so that, that shows you how it remembers what's going on from session to session. Uh, so once you're in the software, you certainly can uh, type in your serial number or asset ID number uh, if you'd like. And once you do that, you will be able to see the serial number that you're looking for. In this particular case, it's a 312 excavator that belongs to Carter Rental. Uh, the asset ID is blue hyperlinked. You can select that. It'll take you to that particular machine. Here you can see all of the different samples that we have listed for it. Uh, the check mark over here is beside the engine. So you, these are all of the pertinent engine samples uh, from a historical standpoint. Uh, you can simply click on these uh, icons. If it's a yellow icon, it's monitor. If it's green, it's uh, no action required. If this were a red triangle, it would be an action required sample. And if you click on that, it'll simply give you the verbiage of the interpretation itself, along with some other basic information about it. Um, if you'd like to see the hydraulic samples, you can certainly put the check mark over here beside the hydraulic. It'll change the hydraulic. If you'd like to see all the compartments combined, you certainly can do so, and it will list them out in a chronological order here. So if you actually want to see the actual engine samples themselves, the blue hyperlinked lab control number is over here. Um, you can simply click on one. It'll take you into the field, and it will populate your information when the fancy wheel stops spinning. <laughs> um, 
up here, it will give you your information as far as uh, what compartment you're looking at, uh, the hour meter, um, have you changed the fluid, things like that. Uh, it'll give you the interpretation. Down here, if it would actually load, which is loading some of it now, uh, it gives you your wear metals um, from a historical standpoint. Here you can see that these are the individual sample dates historically. Um, it gives you other readings as far as so oxidation, nitration, sulfation, uh, basically all the information you would expect to see from your samples. Uh, if you'd like to see this in the format that you're normally seeing this when it gets emailed out to you, uh, you can click the PDF icon over in the right-hand corner. And you can see in the lower left-hand corner that we're waiting for SOS, and there we go. It downloaded the summary. You can open it. And now this looks like the sample that you're used to seeing when you receive it in the email uh, in the afternoons. So you can simply save this. You can forward it on to someone else. Uh, it, it is a PDF just like anything else, so um, you can do whatever you'd like with it. The other thing that you can do with this software is it allows you to pre-print labels um, for your samples when you submit them. Let's go back here. So. Once you put in a serial number that, you've, that you're interested in doing a service on or pulling a sample, uh, you simply click on that. Once you get on this page, you can select the compartments uh, that you would like to sample. Let's say we're going to sample the radiator and hydraulic systems. We're going to click Submit Samples here. Uh, this gives you a screen that allows you to verify what you're doing. Um, and realize, oh, I don't want to sample the radiator. That was a mistake. I didn't mean to click on it. You can click on that. You can remove it. And there it's gone. Uh, so now we want to just sample the engine and hydraulic. You can either click on each one individually. You can click on asset ID. Uh, asset ID is nice because it writes all of them at one time. Uh, for uh, this particular case, we've got two compartments. It doesn't make that much of a difference. But if you're doing an articulated truck that has 11 geared compartments by itself, um, being able to select them all at once is kind of nice. Uh, once you do that, you can select sample details. That will take you to a page where you provide the information for said samples. The first field is the sample date. That is the date you're going to pull the sample. It defaults always to the day, uh, today's date. Uh, you can simply click on the calendar icon, and you can change that to whatever you'd like. Uh, if you're setting up maintenance to be done, you know, a week later or two weeks later or something like that. Um, you can put the asset meter on here. If you don't know what the meter is going to be, if you're going to do this sample of this uh, service in the future, you simply can just leave it blank and hand write that into the field of our meter or asset meter once you print the label and get beside the machine. That's fine. That's not a problem at all. You can also put the PM interval here. Uh, you can put the shop job number here as well, uh, job site if you've got one. Uh, down here, these are individual fields for the engine compartment, and in this case for the hydraulic compartment as well, since those are the two compartments we selected. Uh, you, the previous meter is zero here um, because we didn't have anything uh, previously selected. Um, you can see that it did remember the brand of oil here, mobile, the weight of oil, 1540. Um, you can indicate whether you've changed the filter, whether or not you've changed the fluid, did you have to add any fluid. This is all vital information that you can put into the system, um, and the same goes for the hydraulic as well. Um, once you get done filling this out, uh, you simply can press Submit Samples. When you do that, it gives you a preview. We just haven't filled anything out, so there's really not much to preview. Um, but you can see that you can look through here and say, okay, that's, uh, that's correct. Um, and then you can move on to printing labels. Uh, the Zebra roll printer is probably the preferred method of doing this. Um, that way you can just print off one label at a time instead of having a sheet of paper with stickers on it that you have to manage. Uh, you know, if you print off one or two, the next time you print off 
custom labels, you'd have to realize, okay, I need to start on row one, column three. I'm sorry, um, I'd have to start on column one, row three, because I've already used two stickers. Um, whereas if you use a cash register style roll printer, um, which looks, uh, I thought I had a picture of it, but I don't, I apologize. I'll have to find that for you. Um, I get back to where I was. Sorry guys, having technical difficulties here. <laughs> There we go. Um, I was trying to show you what the printer looked like, but, uh, but you can simply email me and I can send you uh, what the make and model is. Um, but once you get to that point where you are submitting samples, um, it's just a matter of then printing them and what you'll end up getting is a PDF that looks just like this. And this you can simply print off on your cash register style printer or if you're using the Avery sticker sheets. Either way, uh, affix this to the bottle and send it in. It's already got the serial number. It's got the make, it's got the model, it's got all the valuable information. All we have to do is scan it in the lab and it will pre-register it for us. Uh, it'll pull all that information in. Uh, and it really eliminates the hassle that your technicians have to go through for handwriting labels, um, the problems of them accidentally transposing serial numbers when they write them down, or equipment numbers, uh, or even our registration people here transposing a number uh, when they're registering hundreds and hundreds of samples a day. Uh, we don't make too many mistakes, but it does happen. Uh, but with pre-printed labels, it eliminates that altogether from the scenario. So. With that being said, I know I've thrown a lot at you here in the past 30 minutes. Um, does anybody have any questions about anything that I've done? Does anybody have any comments or would like me to talk about anything else more in depth? Or do you just have a random question um, on oil, coolant, or fuel that I can answer for you or anything in particular? All right. Sounds like, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, sounds like we've got uh, pretty good answers there on, uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of information there, Mike. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it is a whirlwind that I throw at you there. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, thanks again to you all for, for showing up. Um, We've got shop talks again scheduled for the next uh, three weeks, and and we'll we'll keep these going. Um, the next one is the Cat Rental Store Web X, uh, or excuse me, Web App, um, and then the uh, May 13th, um, we're going to talk about uh, Caterpillar filters and what's the difference. It's not a sales presentation. Just uh, want to talk about the technical difference between Caterpillar filters and and other brands of filters, and then May 20th. Uh, we'll uh, talk about the free Cat Inspect app. That's uh, a really, really good tool, and uh, it can be used in conjunction with your PM program that you're doing now or uh, a lot of other things. So Cat Inspect is a really cool tool. Um, before you go, two things. I uh, want to give you an email address, shoptalkchannel at cartermachinery.com. If you have feedback or things you want to hear about or if you want to get in touch with Mike, uh, please uh, just drop us a line at shoptalkchannel at cartermachinery.com and we'll be more than happy to uh, either answer your question or get you to the person that can answer your question, either one. And then the last thing is we have a poll that should have just popped up on your screen, 
uh, where you can uh, answer a few questions. If you don't mind, go through that. It takes probably a minute or two uh, to answer those questions, and we certainly appreciate any feedback that you can give us and how we can do a better job next time. So uh, with that being said, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate your business. Uh, we appreciate your time as well. So have a great afternoon and stay safe. Thanks.